what about when you're a golfer, filling out things like the scorecard um, and learning about handicaps? Is being good at reading and writing a help there? Oh, a huge help. How? A huge help. Well, you know, in some cases, OK, the things have changed now in the sense that when you enter a competition in the club, you have a swipe card and your card is printed out. But, you know, a few years ago, it had to be handwritten. And, uh, you know, maybe if you were going out in a group of people, you might be handed the cards and say, you know, fill them in. You know people's names and stuff like that, you know. And, uh, if you weren't good at writing and spelling, it, it could be very embarrassing. Because you're out there together, you're all... That's right. On yeah. the green on and... The, and... And people will be checking their cards after. Mm. You know, to see to check their scores and that, and you know how then how their names are written and things like that. You know, so if you weren't good at it, it, it was. So now that you're more confident with your reading and writing, does that mean you're a more confident golfer out there? I suppose to admit that I needed help in one area, you know, has helped me. To, has broadened my. It's not a problem for me to ask, ask for help anymore, mm -hmm. and that's that's a huge advantage to me, mm -hmm. because for years I wouldn't have admitted that while I can read and write, I don't have a problem reading and writing, but my spelling would have been very poor and uh, I wouldn't have admitted that to anybody, yeah. you know, and now I do and it's not a problem and that's the way it is. And yeah, that's great. It's, it's great. What about in general, the two of you, um, do you think that for sports, reading and writing and being good at it uh, really does help for all sports that you've come across? I think so, yeah, and certainly just to be part of the group that will watch a game, say, at Croke Park, mm -hmm. It becomes more and more enjoyable when you can just check the scoreboard and check who's leading and by how many points they're leading and just go back to the enjoyment of watching the skillful players then demonstrating you know, and I suppose reading their expertise. Programs. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, reading the papers beforehand, just checking the form, maybe, you know, just to get some hints as to who's playing well or maybe there's some injury concerns. You can find out so much by being able to read. Just a point about the reading, you know, mm. there's a lot of very good books written by, by golfers and the other people that uh, can be very helpful to someone like myself, you know, uh, a high amateur golfer. And uh, to be able to read and study those books, they can be very helpful and very enjoyable. Of course, sports are just one of those things that have us shouting out loud at the television, whether it's the Ryder Cup or the World Cup or Wimbledon. It's a time when many of us lose our inhibitions and all kinds of strange noises can be heard. Sometimes when we hear ourselves reading out loud, we can feel self-conscious, but we don't have to be. Here are some more pointers on breaking down words into their sounds. Every letter has a different sound. Ah. B. K. And sometimes letters combine to make new sounds. Sh. Sh. We can use these sounds to try and figure out how words are spelled. One way to do this is to try and write all the sounds in a word in separate boxes. For a word like bat, you listen carefully to the sounds in the word and write each sound in a separate box. B. A. T. Bat. Or another example, the sounds in the word chip are ch, i, p, chip, chip, c h u r c h, church. Some people find it useful to use sound to help them to remember spellings. You could record yourself saying a word and its spelling and listen to it again and again until you know it. Mrs. D, Mrs. I, Mrs. F, F, I, Mrs. C, Mrs. U, Mrs. L, T, Y. Rhythm is also a great way to remember things. For example, rhythm can help you to remember the spelling of a word like difficulty. Mrs. D, Mrs. I, Mrs. F, F, I, Mrs. C, Mrs. U, Mrs. L, T, Y. So, sound is useful in two ways. Firstly, to figure out how a word is spelled, and also to remember a spelling. C, H, U, R, C, H. Church. Shane, your job is to say things out loud, uh, pronouncing the names of footballers from Venezuela or not to mention horses' names. Do you practice before you go on air? Absolutely. And yeah. that's how I started out, even in local pirate radio in Clonmel as a 14 year old. Um, before I got my first job in radio, I would have always been reading the newspaper out loud. 
for some mm. strange reason. I, I was always trying to, I f found it a challenge to get names and pronunciations correct. Yeah, I don't and it still is ever, the you same. Ever, you ever slip up, but the names of, of some of the horses in particular Well, you would still tricky. slip up, but I mean, I think it's just hugely important in our business to prepare and to practice it. Mm -hmm. because you are doing it in public and uh, in the last couple of years when you talk about pronunciations of players' names and stuff with the the growing amount of Russian players and Eastern Bloc players certainly in tennis you have Dementievas and Hantichovas whereas you used to be just Navratilova and Sukova and you could get by and yeah. you knew those very well but now they're just a steady stream of all these Eastern Bloc sounding names so it takes quite a bit of practice bit of just practice. to get them right. <laughs> Jim, did you find it difficult in the start to sound out words aloud? Like Shane, I wouldn't have to be. I didn't, you know, I wouldn't have done much public speaking or anything like that. So it wasn't that. Those things weren't a real yeah. problem for me. You know? Not a problem. No. Well, it's around this time of year that we traditionally reach the climax of the GAA season, uh, the All Ireland finals, of course. But if you've never been to a game before, you might wonder about how to get tickets. If so, you might find this next piece a useful guide. On a Sunday afternoon in summer, there's nothing like relaxing by the water. Or you could go to a local Gaelic football match. But if you've never been to one before, like Lena and Bernd from Germany, how do you find out more? Your local newspaper is a good place to start. Look, the match is on today. Litron oh, versus Mayo. Yeah, right. Hey, let's see if we can get tickets oh, yeah, from the let's game. Oh, yeah, let's get tickets. And yeah, ask her, yeah? Oh, let's go, yeah, all right. Hi. Hey. Can we get two tickets, a Litron versus Mayo? Sure. No. There you are. Thanks. How much are they? 34 for two. Uh, okay, 34. great. How can we get to the stadium? You just go downtown, take the first turn left at the bottom of the town. Okay. Onto the roundabout, yeah. onto yeah. the N4, and it's just along the N4. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. in English and in Irish? Well, that's our national language, the Irish. The yeah. Irish, they're able to see, right? So in the match programs, they have to be in both. They have to be both English and Irish, right? Oh, OK, okay. Yeah. So it's my first game, or oh, our first game. Yeah. How okay. long are the games? Uh, the game itself is uh, two halves of 35 minutes, right? OK? Yeah. Now, there will be some injury time as well in either half, so you might, you might even run to 40 minutes a half, a maximum. You've got the net, like in soccer, right? But if you score a goal, you get three points for that. The point then is uh, the two uprights that are, that's above the net. That's a one pointer for that one, right? Okay. Explain me uh, some rules, please. Uh, the basic rules would be when you receive the ball, right? You're allowed to take four steps with the ball, right? And then you've got to either solo the ball or bounce the ball, right? The solo is where you kick the ball back to yourself. You just drop it onto your foot and kick it back up into your hands again. Yeah. Okay. You can keep soloing the ball all the way up the field if you want, but if you bounce the ball, you've got to solo again before you can bounce it again. If you bounce it twice in a row, it's free. You're not allowed to pick the ball off the ground with your, with your hands. You have to put your foot underneath the ball to pick it up. Very good, very good, very good. That's a goal, yeah, one of the three points, excellent. So it's now that's nine, brilliant. yeah? Yeah, nine, that's right, now nine. Very good, you're picking it up, yeah. excellent, yeah. Yeah, and a very good goal as well. The halftime score was Leitrim, one goal and three points. Yeah, cool there, three cooling, three points. Mm -hmm. So it was a halftime score of six points for them. Oh, yeah. okay. half -time. And Mayo had scored two goals. Two. So that's uh, three points for goals, so that's six and uh, eight points. So that's a halftime score of 14 for us, yeah, for Mayo. Filling out the scorecard on your game programme is a great way to practice your adding. Sometimes in order to figure out who is winning, you have to convert all goals to points. Remember, one goal is worth three points. Uh, yeah. Soccer is a very good game as well, but can be a bit predictable, right? Yeah. But this kind of game, it changes and ebbs and flows. It's excellent. It's excellent, you know? It's really a really quick game. It is, yeah, and robust. Yeah. Very robust. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You can only tackle the ball itself. You're not supposed to tackle the person, but that can be stretched out a little bit, right? Yeah. So you can see some kind of pulling of jerseys and that kind of stuff. Uh, too much of that is free as well, right? Okay. 
No one becomes an expert in GAA by going to just one match, but the more you watch, the more tips and information you'll pick up along the way. There's good TV coverage now for football, and there's also the web, the library, and your local GAA club. By the end, you may have even found yourself a new hobby. Well, Jim, I'm from Cork, so we're not going to mention the hurling final, OK? But uh, do you follow GAA? I do, yes. I enjoy GAA, yeah. Yeah, do you play it? I used to play a bit of football many years ago. Before you took up golf? Before I took up golf, yes. And, and what do you watch now? I would watch the GAA matches and uh, I would watch all sport. You know, uh, I'd watch the soccer and the rugby mm. and uh, watch the golf, of course. My first time in Crow Park was in 1954 when... Cork beat Wexford in the All Ireland oh, final. Right, so I'll right. never forgive them for that. That was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, it seems to me that the rules keep changing. Um, is it getting very confusing for you reporting on it? It is to a degree, Flora. And I have to say, I mean, last year they did try try out a few new rules when they were talking about sin binning and the use of different mm. implements. And like back a, doors. Yeah, and, and all back doors. Things. They came in a couple of years ago. So they've proved to be quite successful. I mean, I think they're refining all the time. It's never going to be perfect. And I suppose that leads to all the heated debate that we like to enjoy in this country because it is the lifeblood of the community. Yeah. Gaelic Games is really what we're all about. But um, Does it know, make it confusing for you, though? It, it is confusing at times as to when, hang on a second, that rule was they only tried it out in the National League, it's not in the Championship. So no, he actually is off and he's off for the whole match, whereas the sin bin, he's only off for a certain period of time. Um, you know... I think they'll never have it fully right mm -hmm. and maybe we're probably the better for that as well because mm. it adds to the flavour. I think it's going in the direction of cricket personally which <laughs> takes a bit of figuring out. Yeah. But that's all we have time for today. We'd like to thank our guests for coming in. To Jim Howland, thanks very much for joining us Jim and to Shane O'Donoghue as well. In the meantime, here are the contact details once again to get hold of your free workbook that goes with the series. Till next time, thanks for watching. For your free student pack and workbook, Free phone 1800 20 20 65. That's 1800 20 20 65. Or you can go online and visit www.rug.ie or write to The Really Useful Guide to Words and Numbers, Care of NALA, 76 Lower Gardner Street, Dublin 1.